Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is a laundry day q and I don't have any actual clean laundry to fold while I'm doing this because my laundry room is like right there, that little closet right there. Um, there is stuff in the wash and stuff in the dryer, but it is my first load into the dryer for now. So if this video runs a little bit long, I might actually bring some laundry over here and start folding it. But just depends on how many questions that you guys had for me. I purposely did not look at my social media for these posts. Um, I posted a photo a couple of days ago that says, sorry, it's like, eh, uh, there you go, <laughs> laundry day Q&A. And I have 42 comments on Instagram and I don't have as many like people, I guess, on Facebook, but I will answer some Facebook questions as well. Without further ado, let's do a laundry day Q&A. We're just going to start at the top. And then if there are repeated questions, I just won't answer them, obviously, because I'll just say, oh, that's a repeat. First question about tattoos. Somebody asked me about tattoos a while ago, and she's referring back to this question. It says, out of curiosity, you said a long time ago in a Q&A that you had a tattoo. What it is, or what is it, and where is it? I have three tattoos, and they are all below my waist. Two of them are like Chinese character symbols and one of them is a barcode. And I don't think I will ever, ever show them on the internet, just FYI. And then someone asks, where's your September budget video? Girl, I just posted it. <laughs> Today is currently Friday because it's laundry day. So last Friday was the first and today is the eighth. So it just worked out that way in my posting schedule, but it is up. I promise you it is up. Uh, someone else asked, how do you maintain your nails? Right now we're going on almost a week of these painted. They are super cracked and I'm taking them off probably tonight and repainting them. How do we maintain them? I don't know. Um, hmm. I use a lot of hand lotion, uh, which I love. That's like good for your cuticle hand lotion. And then when I actually do my nails, I have this like whole long process. I did a video like maybe two and a half, three years ago on like how I give myself a manicure. I think it's the same, but if you guys are interested in maybe like an updated version of how I give myself a manicure, let me know in the comments below if you wanna see a manicure video. I typically, well my fingernails and hair grow so incredibly fast but like my nails, I like to keep them pretty short, but they grow really fast. So if I have nail polish on, um, typically I keep them shorter because I just, I like them short. It's good for like the editing skills and stuff. So anyway, if I don't have polish on, I just kind of like let them grow and then it gets like weird or whatever. So, um, all right, so next question, random question. What do you love and most dislike about your new home? That's a good question. So I would say like most dislike about my new home. Uh oh, Doyle's back. Not Doyle, you know, that'd be rude. <laughs> I think the thing I most dislike about the new home is that because, oh, hi, um, because I live in a townhome association, I am unable to have a fenced in backyard for this little fool. So I would love that, but unfortunately it's against, you know, the HOA rules or whatever. So that's probably the thing I most dislike because if I could, this place would be just 100% perfect. Like there'd be nothing wrong with it. What do I love about the home? I actually love all the work that um, everyone did to the home. So like the, all this, all the work my mom did, all the work I did, um, all of the painting that I got, uh, well, my mom and I did a bunch of painting and my mom did like the bulk of the painting. Let's be honest here. Favorite mother. She's not available for hire guys, but she's pretty awesome. And, um, I'm, ex I'm, I also love all the painting that I hired out to do that big vault in the, in the way back over there. And then, um, oh, I love my new flooring. It is so nice in the main level. Oh, it's so great. And I absolutely love that. So looking forward to finally updating some bathrooms probably in the next couple of years. But yeah, so those are the things I love the most is the things that like my mom and I and other people have touched to kind of like make it my own and give myself my own vision. Can I help you, sir? I mean, he just wants to sit here so I can like 
pet his head that you can't see? You can see his ear, it's like pokey little ear. This is a hard question. What is your favorite thing about yourself? I don't know. It says physical feature, character trait, etc. Hmm. Okay, if I would go with physical feature, I really like my eyes, like my eye color. I really like that. It's hard to see right now because I'm super glared out because of my glasses. If I explain this correctly, around the black part of my eye, it's actually kind of like a brownish golden color and then around the very exterior of my eye color it's like a deep deep blue and then around the inside is green so my eyes really reflect re reflect reflect green most of the time um, when I was younger they did reflect blue but um, as I got older they were greener and greener and greener so I don't know I really like my eyeballs I guess as for character trait Hmm. I think it'd be something that you either like, really like, or you really dislike about people. But I really enjoy, especially as I'm getting older, not caring about what others think. I know that's kind of crazy and we all just want to be accepted, but the more I don't care, the more comfortable I am with myself to say, you know, I'm authentic to me, I'm doing my own thing, I am being true to who I am as a person, and if you don't like it, that's okay. And I'm not out to like offend anybody, you know, in my normal daily life or even on the internet. You know, if you don't like my videos, don't watch. You know, if you don't wanna be my friend in real life, don't be my friend, it's okay. Like, I, there's other people for you to be friends with and there's other people for you to watch on YouTube. And you know, like, I, I just stopped caring and that's like a really freeing thing. So I think that's something I like about my personality, I guess. Wow, that was like a really long answer. <laughs> um, if you could swap places with a historical figure for a day, who would it be and why? You know, history is not really my forte, to be completely honest. I did this like really massive report on Juliet Lowe once, and I think it would be cool to go back in time and kind of like just see that era. Maybe not be her, but like see that era. She was the founder of the Girl Scouts. Maybe Juliet Lowe, because I just like, didn't I just remember going like hog wild on this report and I know my mom's gonna be mad if I don't tell you guys this story but we actually went to Savannah Georgia which is where Ju where Juliet Lowe is from way before this like book report thing happened or it wasn't a book report it was like a it was a history report because it was for history class in American history and um, we randomly got selected people that you wouldn't know really who they were and I got Juliet Lowe and she's like does anyone know who their historical figure is and I'm like the only person in class that raised my hand and I was like you know like what they did and why they're a part of our American history and I'm like yeah I do and she's like well how do you know and I'm like well I've been a girl scout since I was in kindergarten and my mom and I went there like two years ago to her house and like all of this stuff and they're like oh wow so in Savannah Georgia we actually went to um, her home and did like this big tour um, and Savannah was gorgeous by the way so I highly recommend Savannah Georgia it is so cool the town squares are just amazing and the people are super cool so my report was pretty nuts because I had a lot of information. Plus I'd been a Girl Scout for a really long time, so I had a lot of information about that aspect too because we wanted, to, in the report, we wanted to talk about their life and then also like talk about why you know they're important and what role they played in our American history. So anyway, let's go with Julia Lowe, that's fun. Let's do that. Someone says, in reference to a previous post, would you like to try English Smarties and Swizzles? If you do, I'll send you some. Sure, um, if you wanna send me anything ever to any of you guys out there, my public mailbox is always down below. Feel free to send me whatever you want. I typically go and check my um, mailbox about once a week, uh, especially if I know something's coming. Sometimes like PR packages and things like that will come in the mail and I'll kind of know when they're coming because they'll send me like a UPS or FedEx tracking number so I know it's there. If you guys ever wanna send me something, feel free, it's below. Have fun. Uh, some of you guys like send me letters and cards and I really love that. F don't feel like you have to send me like stuff, okay? Don't feel like you have to do that. But I love your letters and things like that, so. Um, let's see. What are some of your favorite recipes from childhood slash present day? Uh, probably macaroni and cheese spirals. Yeah, it probably sounds about right. Uh, the Kraft brand has to be Kraft macaroni and cheese. Has to be. Yes. I like this person's question. 
It says, what would be the coolest animal to scale up to the size of a horse? So like you have a horse and then you have another animal. Like what would be a cool animal to scale up next to that? I feel like it'd have to be an animal that's like really tiny maybe or like really big because I mean, I've ridden like a bajillion horses in my day so I know how big they are but I don't know I keep going back to like a barnyard chicken like I think that would be kind of cool just because they're just so funny and I love their like little round bodies and they've got like these little pokey legs I don't know I think they're funny okay I'm going with a jigging uh, someone asked do you think you will ever get back into debt I'm gonna say no and I hope you're asking about consumer debt and not like mortgage debt because obviously I have mortgage debt right now because I have a mortgage but um, if I can help it absolutely not no but it's not on my plan. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, this is a good one. Is there any reason that you've been single for so long? You seem like a catch and I was just wondering why you were not married yet. Well, that's a whole nother like dimension of question. Um, there's not really a reason. I guess I'm super particular. Like, to be kind of vague about it, I'm very particular. I like what I like, and I really don't like what I really don't like. So I definitely have criteria, which I think we all should have criteria, because let's be honest, like, if you're choosing a life partner, like, you want to make sure that certain things line up for you, okay? Just that being said. And this is beyond the, like, physical stuff. It's just, like, a non-smoker can't be a smoker i can't do it i'm not a smoker i've i've never been a smoker i i'm so sensitive to cigarette smoke i actually get splitting migraines if i'm around somebody that smokes so i, I just can't do that uh you have to have a job I, I don't care what you do i don't really care how much money you make i just want you to be like productive to society in some way so a job non-smoker attractive to me which is a whole nother video. We're not gonna talk about that, but I need to be attracted to you in some way. Um, you have to be mentally there. I need to be able to have a conversation with you. I need to be able to share ideas with you. And you know, you just can't be a pretty face or you can't talk at me. You know what I mean? Like you just need someone intelligent to be your mate, you know? Like, I don't know. So anyways, um, yeah, that's really, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have to like align with the money stuff, but I mean, if someone's in debt, that's okay. I mean, there's ways to fix that. As you guys know, with some of my other previous videos, if you've watched, like I'm not a religious person. Um, I tend to swipe left. <laughs> I have some dating apps, um, but I don't really go out on dates because they scare me. But I tend to shy away from anybody that outwardly says on their dating apps that they are religious because I just don't want to be that point of contention where they're, they get upset that I am not religious and then we go out on a date and it's like you know I, I'm just speaking in general terms here so like don't give me hate in the comments I'm just speaking in general terms most people of certain faiths want to be with someone else of the same faith if that makes sense I, I try to steer clear of that a little bit more just because I'm not here to change anybody's mind. No one's here to change my mind either. So uh, if that is a big deal for somebody, I would rather just not, you know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, also no kids. Um, they can have kids from like a previous relationship, but I am not producing a child inside of my body. It's just not gonna happen. They just need to be on board with that. I don't know. That, I, that was a really long, long explanation. Sorry guys. And thank you for thinking that I'm a catch and I should be married by now. Um, you know, and I, I'm not sure if I will ever get married I, I I don't know um and it would be okay if I never got married it's okay with me like I don't need and I know it's gonna sound crazy but like as a woman I know we've all been programmed to think a certain way and I was that person too where you know some guy's gonna come in and save me and, uh, anyway I did a whole like Q&A about that a while back in Bloon I think maybe blue I, I can't remember deep down like i just don't need that validation in life um i kind of explained it i was in a long-term relationship like a couple of relationships ago and i was explaining it to a friend where we were kind of at that pivotal like two and a half year mark and we had lived together and everything was going good and it just didn't feel right 
But at the end of the day, as a woman, I felt like I wanted the validation for him to want to marry me, but I didn't want to marry him. And I know that sounds totally horrible, and I hope that some of you can like understand where I'm coming from on that. It's like I wanted him to feel that way, selfishly, but then I knew that in my like deep down guts, like this wasn't right for forever, you know? It just wasn't right for that situation, and Actually, shortly after that, we ended up, you know, splitting up, and I'm actually still, you know, in contact with him, and he's a great guy, and the problem is, in the relationship, that nothing was wrong. It just wasn't working for me. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Ooh, there's so many to choose from. Probably because I get like really bad travel anxiety and because I really don't love crowds and lots of people around, I would love to be, you know, someone that could actually like teleport somewhere else. <laughs> so like you could travel and like I'm sitting in like Minnesota right now, but if I thought really hard about it, I could like be in Vancouver, Canada or something and be there and like I wouldn't have to, you know, I'd just be there and then I could just like go about my day. I don't know. Teleportation? Is that it? I don't know. <laughs> um, someone asked, your hair is getting so long. Do you plan on cutting it or letting it grow out? Um, well, it's up in a little like bun-ish thing now. I just walked the dog. I don't know. I think I'm just gonna let it grow up for a little while and see and mm, I tend to only cut my hair like about once or twice a year because I never really I mean I wash it every day because I have to because I'm like a super greasy person <laughs> um thank you oily skin I tend not to ever blow dry my hair maybe once or twice a year I'll blow dry it but to be honest I um I just let it air dry because it's just so much better for it and I, don't, I like it so it stays really healthy I don't know Maybe, I don't know. I guess you guys will find out because I will show my face and be like, hey, look, I got a haircut or I colored my hair. Or, look, I didn't do anything. It's still there. Um, all right, next question. Do your coworkers watch your videos? That'd be a no. And then it says, if so, do they ever give you suggestions, ideas, subscribe to the channel? No, but I do have friends in my real life that like are my other my just regular friends that will give me like suggestions and they subscribe to my channel and like they'll make comments and stuff too someone asked how much money do you set aside each month for planner spending in your budget curious to know if i'm spending too much <laughs> well i don't think you would ever spend too much as long as it's in the budget um since i do youtube videos and this is um i actually have like an llc that is set up through my youtube account um and i set that up um, at the very beginning of this year, yeah, in January. Um, the way that I get paid is through YouTube AdSense and a couple of other different revenue streams. And if I'm showing um, like planner related stuff in a video, that is technically a prop. So I don't really have like a specific budget, but I just don't spend obviously any more than I make. So if I'm doing like giveaways or like if I'm doing giveaways, and I have to ship something like that all comes out of the business account. And if I'm showing like hauls and things like that, it's a business related expense because I'm going to use those on future plan with me's and things like that. So hope that kind of makes sense. I have had a few comments in the past saying that people don't like that and that's not fair because they would want to run a business expense through like washi tape. You know, my response to that in a very, very nice way is then start a YouTube channel and once you start getting paid, which it will take you several years to start getting paid, because it took me several years to start getting paid, uh, about three years to be exact, then you can set up a business and then you can run things through on the advice of your tax person. Um, this is all tax law, so I can't really help with that. But that's what my tax advisor told me to do and that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, that's my very nice response to that. Uh, what are your top three planner slash stationery stores in the Twin Cities area? Ooh, good question. She says I'm gonna be there a few times in the next six months and I'd like to check out some interesting stuff. Okay, so here's where you need to go. There is a place called Patina. Check that out. That is in the cities. If you get like a day to go somewhere else, go to St. Cloud. It's actually a town called Wait Park. It's W-A-I-T-E, not wait like wait here. It's W-A-I-T-E, Park. It's right next to St. Cloud. There is a place called Crafts Direct. It is like the mecca of all the meccas of all the crafting things. 
crafting. Wow crafting things so if you're into anything else like scrapbooking or knitting or anything like that um it's a great place to go plus they've got like tons of washi and stickers and things like i've never seen before they've got what is that washi that like really nice for it like doodle doodle bug or bug doodle i don't know something like that they've got that there so yeah i would go there if i were you um the next place so i said patina patina is really cool maybe paper source but i know paper sources are kind of all over the place i don't know there is a paper source at mall of america if you want to go to mall of america um i was actually just there uh last weekend with jody from life's organized chaos here on youtube so we went there i got some things it was good next question is your current job something you see yourself doing long term if not, what is your dream job? Um, okay, so uh, no, uh, I don't see myself doing that long term, which to me long term is like 10 years, okay? So my dream job is actually this would be my dream job to be able to create content and vlog, uh, you know, maybe do like weekly vlogs or something like that where I kind of just take you around my life and you know show you what i'm working on show you like house projects and just be able to like dedicate more time and do better editing have better lighting uh have better camera equipment like you know but it, it takes money to do some of those things and to ob obviously offset not having a stable income and relying on uh like YouTube revenue or revenue from other sources or ad videos or sponsored videos and things like that where um, you know your channel I don't know I don't do sponsored videos um, I do kind of ads once in a while but people just give me their products for free because I always tell them I, there's no guarantee I accept it for consideration only if I mention it in the video, I mention it in the video. If I don't, I don't. At some point in this whole YouTube situation, I feel like I'm gonna have to start making business decisions and actually accepting money for some stuff because a lot of brands that do approach me are very shocked that I don't ask for like a monetary value something. Um, to me, it feels icky right now and I think I just need to get over it. I, I don't know. At some point, I'm gonna have to treat it a little bit more like my income. And obviously, if I only have the one stream of income, which is you guys watching, then I will have to make you know more calculated decisions on that. But if I didn't do anything else besides this, I would have way more time to, you know, talk to brands and approach brands and you know have conference calls and do all that stuff. Where right now it's pretty much emailing, uh, either super early in the morning or really late at night. Like I have. A couple emails in my inbox I have to uh, deal with which I'm like oh I just want the brain power to like look over the contract or like look over like all this stuff that you know they want me to do and it's like I, I you know and, and that point then I usually just delete it and I just move on but if I had time to do it then I would if that makes sense so I don't know if you guys have strong opinions about people like myself, you know, trying to go full time or, uh, you know, trying to earn an income on YouTube. And let me know how you feel about like ad or sponsored videos down below. Um, obviously I would still keep the content authentic to me and still give my opinions because that would be like part of the deal, you know? I don't know. I mean, let me know what you think below because I'm on the fence about it. I. I don't mind if someone like if it says ha like hashtag ad or sponsored or featuring whatever I still watch the video I don't care because I like that person's opinion but I'd be curious to see my viewers the people that subscribe to my channel and the people that watch that end up watching this video what you guys would think so post it down below let me know let me know I'm super curious all right this one says hi Emily what tools do you use to plan and keep track of things on your non YouTube workplace also, what made you choose, okay, so let me ask her that question first and then we'll go, she's got a bunch of questions. Um, so I just use the Erin Condren Hourly at my regular day job and I just use the stickers in the back of the book. That's all I use. Also, what made you choose a Shiba Inu and how did you come up with the name Doyle? Um, I think I've answered this in a few different videos. Uh, Shiba Inu is because my high school friend 
that ended up being a high school boyfriend, his family had a Shiba Inu and I absolutely love their dog, Merlin. And so I knew when I got older, I really wanted to get a Shiba Inu of my own and I did. I don't even know where my little Shiba butt is, but he's bad. he's doing something back there, I don't know. And how did I come up with the name Doyle? Uh, the guy that I was dating at the time when I got Doyle was a huge poker fan and we were watching the World Series of Poker, or actually he was watching it and I was probably doing something else. And um, we were trying to come up with names and I really love old, old names. And um, I walked by and I was like, what about Doyle? Because Doyle Brunson is like a World Series of Poker guy or whatever, at least at the time. I, I don't know. <laughs> so that's actually who he is named after is Doyle Brunson. Oh, and then she says, hope you haven't already answered these questions before. I have, but it's okay. I'll answer them again. <laughs> this person is so funny. I says, I'm so going to answer this question, by the way, because I feel like we should all be able to talk about our periods. She said, are you a pad, tampon, or menstrual cup kind of gal? And then what age were you when you started your period, if you remember when that happened? I remember exactly when that happened because that was freaking traumatizing, you guys. I was in seventh grade. And, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I was in sixth grade. It was the very end of the year. I remember I got home and I wasn't like, sounds weird, but I wasn't like big into peeing at school. So I like never would go to the bathroom at school. So as soon as I got home, I was like, you know, you get off the bus and you're like, oh my God, you're going to pee so bad. So you get home and you're like, oh, what the hell? I mean, I already knew what it was because um, actually when I was in Girl Scouts, we had a whole, I don't, it felt like a whole day, but it, I don't think it was, it was probably a few hours. And there was a bunch of different um, Girl Scout troops that came in and Planned Parenthood actually put on this like educational seminar for us. And there was like uh, different stations where there was like five or six girls at each station and we would just rotate. And they talked about what a period was, what it looks like, how it feels to have a period. Like they talked about cramps and like what you can do, like you can take a Tylenol or an Advil to like help with that. They talked about contraception, they talked about what sex was. I mean, they were just very like nitty gritty. They like had us uh, touch t uh, tampons and pads and things like that. Menstrual cups weren't really, I mean, they might've been around, but they weren't like mainstream like they kind of are now. Um, they actually had us touch like condoms. They had us uh, see what a feel female condom was. Um, I think they had like lubricant there and stuff too. I mean, it was just like, here are the facts you guys like here are the facts and i think we went in like fourth grade maybe like end of fourth grade which i know is kind of early but uh one of the gals that well, i shouldn't say gal i mean she was like a child like we were children but one of the girls in my group had already gotten her period like she was way more developed than any of us um any any of us other girls that were in there and my mom was a troop leader at the time and was like okay we need to like inform our girls of like what's going on with their bodies and like what to expect and all of that and um, she found this thing and it was it was so educational. So like when I got my period for the first time, I just like put my underwear in the in the laundry. And of course I didn't do my own laundry at the time. And like a couple days later, my mom like runs up to my room and is like, oh, why didn't you tell me you had your period? You're a woman. And I'm like, I don't know. I knew what to do. So like I knew where the pads were. I knew where the tampons were like, cause my mom showed me like where they were and you know, what her brand was and like, you know, where they were, and I don't know. So I was just like, I don't know, I just dealt with it. I just did it, you know? I just like put a pad on and changed my underpants and I knew how to do it. I didn't need my mom's help. So I think she was kind of disappointed that I didn't tell her, but I was like, why? I didn't think it was a big deal. But now I'm like more of a liner tampon girl, maybe. I don't know, mostly a liner girl. As I get older, it gets better. I'll just say that. Are you going to be giving out Halloween candy this year? Yes, yes I am. Um, I actually already have my Halloween candy in my cabinet. I wanna go, I need to go to like the Dollar Tree and get one of those like big, those big, big plastic bowls. Hi Doyle. Um, because this one here is a little stink butt and hates when people knock on the door or ding dong the doorbell. So I'm just gonna put a bowl of candy out because he's such a pain in the ass. So, yeah. And then if I lock him in a room and then the door rings and people are pounding at the door, he's gonna go even crazier. So, ah, oh, this kid, this kid. Favorite 90s movie slash TV show slash song. Can I help you? It says, I'm 35 years old and listens to 90 music every day. 
nice um 90s tv show my so-called life with george catalano oh my god i mean I wanted him to be my boyfriend for sure. Like I follow Jared Leto on all social media platforms because my little 15 year old heart still wants Jordan Catalano in my life. <laughs> and if you don't know who Jordan Catalano is, just Google it because you're gonna fall in love. Uh, what are your favorite kinds of videos to watch besides planner videos? I really, really, really like home stuff and like fashion stuff, lifestyle things. Those are kind of fun to watch. I don't know. And there's certain like people that I really like too. So um, I like some vloggers. Like I love anything Casey Neistat does. I feel like he's super creative and really fun. And I just, I, I love the way he tells a story. It's just, it's really interesting to me. Um, I will never be at his level, but like he is something to like aspire to with the vlogging situation. Those are kind of what I like to watch. And to be completely honest, like, I know this is gonna be kind of crazy for you guys to hear. I don't watch planner related videos. I know, it's crazy. I watch a couple of people. So I watch like Life's Organized Chaos. I watch, um, these are the people I'm subscribed to. So like obviously I watch their videos. So I, I watch Life's Organized Chaos. I watch Plan the Pounds Away. And I know both of them actually in real life, which is kind of funny. And there are a couple of people I'm subscribed to that do planner related content but then do a bunch of other stuff kind of like my channel and to be honest i don't really watch their planner stuff i watch all their other stuff so i know that's kind of crazy yeah true confessions here true confessions this gal asked if you didn't need to sleep what would you do with your extra time um i would probably um devote it into my channel to be completely honest and kind of get this momentum moving a little bit more and um just be closer to goals if you will to uh you know end up doing this full time so um i don't know when and if that will ever happen but i would love to do that kind of like i talked about previously that's probably what i would do at the time why did you pick the name doyle i already answered that what would your favorite subject in high school and why you know i really liked floral design <laughs> it was kind of a cop-out class but i was always done with my stuff in like a second and it would always I mean, in my opinion, it would look good. I mean, I got a nice, meaty A in those classes. I, there was floor design one and two, and it didn't matter which one you took first. Yeah, I was like so into it, and I loved it. And I don't know, it was just really fun. It was just creative. And then also, like, we talked a lot about, um, like, costing and, like, how much it costs to you know, create a wreath or create a centerpiece and like how much each stem is worth. And it was really, it was really cool. And I really enjoyed it. Um, okay. So this person asked, uh, you currently do videos each month, but would you ever consider doing a budget recap video at the end of the month to show us how you stayed on budget or not? You know, I've kind of debated about that. And like at the end of the month i show you like the last month anyways like i open it up and i'm like oh well here's how last month turned out so i don't really feel like an explanation is due um and all the things that i like budget for are in those categories i don't know i just feel like for me it would be a really boring video for you guys because it would be on my channel as so redundant because i'm just gonna go over it again I don't know so short answer no I've never really thought that that would be a good idea yeah because then people start asking like well why isn't this in there and I saw that you bought this and I saw that you shared this and all this stuff and it's like yeah but that was a business expense and then people get all judgy about like well that's not a business expense well it is when you're sharing certain things and that's between the tax person and me you know like it, it gets weird so yeah i i'm gonna say no i'm just gonna say no uh okay so i actually know this person in real life hi beverly by the way uh it says she says love the random videos and laundry uh why the glasses lately and can you see close or can i see far all right so good question since i um had that recent bout of like really bad headaches like chronic headaches and migraines for like i don't know what was it like 40 days or something ridiculous towards the very like first couple of weeks i think it was like the first two and a half weeks i had my contacts in and i was like screw this literally threw them in the trash and because um i had a headache and it was actually like pressure like right behind my eye it was real like it was just throbbing so i was like you know 
anything that I can get out of my body, like even if it's the contacts, like I just need to get them out. So um, I haven't put my contacts back in, but I think actually tomorrow I might put them back in for the first time because I've been pretty steadily headache free for about a week. So I'm feeling really good and there's a little tiny headache, but it's like very, very manageable. Like I wouldn't take like an Advil or anything for this kind of um, of pain. So I think, I think I'm good now. Um, and then can I see close or can I see far? Or maybe it's can't you see? I don't know. Um, so if I take my glasses off, I'm blind as a bat. And I can see my hand to like right here and then it gets blurry. So yeah, I can see really, really close without my glasses on. But everything far away is just like blurry images and colors and light and that's about it. It says, uh, next question, does Doyle ever show his teeth when he smiles? Can we see a picture of him smiling one of these days? You know, on Instagram, I have a few of him smiling. If you don't follow me on Instagram, feel free to post or not post. Uh, it's it's down below you can just follow there if you want here's the deal if Doyle is smiling that means he's super stressed out and he's probably like a few moments away from a panic attack so yeah he does actually like legitimately have seizures so I try to minimize his stress level uh, usually this happens if we go to the vet if we're going to the groomers office if we're going somewhere he just <sighs> does that kind of thing and then he like really smiles and he doesn't really show his teeth a lot and if he's showing his teeth that means he's stressed out so but if you look back on my Instagram feed um, there is pictures of that somewhere <laughs> hi Emily I love your channel and your budget videos are really informative my question is how long did it take you to save up for your home also toil is awesome well thanks um you know I've been steadily saving for hmm, about hmm, three four five ish years um I mean and when I got I didn't get really super intense about it until the last like two and a half years to be completely honest but before then I was still throwing like every bonus and every single tax refund birthday money whatever it was I just threw it in there and I forgot about it but you know I would still like go on trips and like do things like that but I mean I would do that out of just my regular income so um, I wasn't really taking a lot of my like regular income and paying myself you know off of that I hope that makes sense that's what happened. All right, if you were to change your name, what name would you adopt going forward and why? You know, so I didn't really like my name growing up as a kid because nobody else was named Emily. Everyone else was named like Amanda and Jessica and Katie. And I like so desperately as a child wanted to fit in because I was just like so awkwardly weird and crazy kind of like I am now, um, but just like a lot shorter. <laughs> but I just really wanted to be like accepted and fit in. And I felt like my name Emily was so different because nobody in my school had the same name like literally nobody not even just my class but like nobody in my school had the same name now it's super popular but it's really not popular amongst like the 36 year olds of the world I mean there are other sort of 36 year olds that are named Emily but it just wasn't very popular when I was born so I don't know what I would go for because I don't think any other name is good maybe FDE maybe I don't know. That one's for you, Kayla, by the way, if you're watching, which you probably are. So, hi, Kayla. She calls me FDE. Another good question. If there are, is there any food that you hated as a kid that you now love? She says, mine was mac and cheese. I would not eat it because it looked weird. And then one day I tried it and I've been in love ever since. Well, mac and cheese is really good. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, uh, I really like certain vegetables now. Like I really like mushrooms, but they have to be cooked. You know, vegetables, I guess, maybe. That would be a good answer. How do you resist the urge to spend? Well, that's easier said than done. I feel like everyone is different and resisting the urge to spend is very difficult for some people and very easy for others. It just kind of depends. What I do is I keep my bigger goal in mind. So whether that's paying off debt, saving for your kid's college, living your retirement dreams, like whatever it is, 
that's gonna not make you go through the Starbucks line every single morning and get you further to that with the money vehicle that you do have. That's kind of what inspires me to curb the spending a little bit and like just kind of push it down and be like, no, I don't need that. Um, it's like, no, I don't need stuff from Williams Sonoma. Well, I actually, I have a couple things from Williams Sonoma, but I don't need to go hog wild in there. I can find a lot of the other things that are very similar at like a Home Goods or a Target. Like there's ways to get those certain things like on a budget um, and it just makes me think about it a little bit more to say you know these are my other goals that I want to have and bigger things that I want to do with my life in order to reach those goals I need to say no to a couple things right now <laughs> this is a great question and I have no answer but I'm gonna read it anyway it says how do you get gel pen off of your sheets after you fall asleep planning and roll over on the G2 pen repeatedly throughout the night. Well, girl, I think you're just gonna have to go and get some new sheets, okay? I don't know, because G2s are freaking messy. <laughs> and I really wanna see a photo of that, so please, it's a plan Sarah plan. Take a picture, I hope you took a picture of it. You should tag me on Instagram, because we're on Instagram right now, so I know you have an account. You should tag me, because I wanna see that. If I had to eat one meal for the rest of my life, what would it be? I would say Dragon House, but they close, so I don't know. I don't know right now. Someone says, have you been intrigued by, it says M-O-N-A-T, Monet? Monat? I mean, I think Monet, like, the painter. Have I been intrigued by Monet at all? I miss the same Monet, I don't know. I believe some of the YouTubers you watch advocate for it. Curious in your thoughts. I don't know what it is, so I have no thoughts. Sorry. Someone asks, how can I stop living paycheck to paycheck? Budget. Sacrifice and make a plan. Good luck. Do you do a lot of reading? If so, what are you reading now and what are your favorite books? To be honest, I don't do a ton of reading because my extra time on the weekends is really dedicated to you guys and YouTube, so I don't do a ton of reading, but I am a big nerd and I love to read business books randomly. So I read like all the Dave Ramsey stuff and then I also do other things as well. So uh, I've read like the Amazon book, I've read like the Container Store book. Yeah, I'm crazy like that. This gal asks, what is the weirdest thing you've had to do for Doyle? For example, my dog had to get his anal glands low. Okay, we're gonna stop asking that question now. Um, that, yeah, I mean, I get it. Uh, probably the weirdest thing, you know, when, okay, there's some weird stuff, and if you guys don't like TMI, like, click out, or like, put it on, like, mute for a minute. When Doyle was a puppy, this is like so normal with like, boy dogs, they're little like, weenie, it would get like, mucus on it and he would like constantly lick it because I think from like being a little pupper and then him being like weaned off of his mom or I, I don't know but something was going on and I would take like not a hot washcloth but like you know a warmish washcloth and like wash it off because like he'd get like dirt in it because it would be like still wet from the pee and I, I don't know it's fine now obviously but it's like a very normal thing for uh little pups to have at least with shebas i think with other ones it's fine too but i mean you can just leave it too because they will just like lick it and they'll clean it themselves but i was like ew and <laughs> so it's probably the weirdest thing i've done so far all right so last question on instagram and then i'm going to wrap this bad boy up uh, if you could go back in time, what year would you travel to? Um, I would travel to a very specific year. I would travel to 1999. That is the year that, well actually no, 1998 in the fall when I started my senior year of high school. Um, I would do a lot of things differently. It would probably change the trajectory of my life a little bit, but I would also be able to spend some time with people that would still be alive at that time as well. And it was just a, a good time in my life. And um, you know, to kind of like just re relive those memories too, which is kind of cool. Because that's like the last time in my life I really remember having not really a single care in the world so that's probably what I would do well I was gonna say goodbye but I am back I just changed my battery um, I don't have that many questions on Facebook and this video is gonna be like epically long anyway so I might as well just keep on trucking so now I'm on the Facebook answering your questions my social media links are always below if you guys want to watch or not watch 
Well, you could watch, I guess, but um, if you want to follow me anywhere. So, first question, do you do any meal planning? I know cooking for one can be challenging, just curious if you plan out, you know, to like keep costs down at the grocery store. Um, you know, I don't really plan it. I just kind of like whatever looks good at the grocery store and then I just kind of eat the same thing for like three or four days <laughs> because I'm single and I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's usually what I do. A lot of times I'll even come home and I'm like, you know, it sounds really good right now, like a tomato. And I'll like legit just sit and eat a tomato. Like, I don't know. Um, I'm single. I guess I can do that if I really want to. I don't need to like make a meal. How did you get hooked on Erin Condren? What made you gravitate towards the hourly? And does it truly give you enough room to in the evenings. Will you go back to the life planner? Well, it is a life planner, but it's just the hour lead version. So how did I get hooked on Erin Condren? Um, probably Jen Ross from, well, then it was Jen Plant, or not Jen Plants. I'm thinking of somebody else, <laughs> sorry. Organized like Jen, that's the channel that she had named at the time. Now she is Pretty Neat Living. That's who first kind of like introduced me to Erin Condren and Erin Condren products. Let's see here. My, what made me gravitate towards the hourly? Jen Plans, actually on Instagram, um, she started using the hourly and I was like, you know what? Like this would work so much better better than uh, the vertical that I had been using. Cause I just didn't understand like how to put it in properly and the hours just gave me like a parameter and I, it just felt better for me. Uh, does it truly give you enough room in the evenings? No, unfortunately it does not. I have so many wish lists about how the hourly could be better, but I wish there was more time in the evenings, but I don't know. Uh, no. Short answer, no. It doesn't give you enough time in the evenings. But if you don't really like schedule too many plans in the evenings, it's okay. Um, or if you do have plans in the evenings, you can just like put it at the bottom. And then will I go back to the life planner? I think you mean will I go back to the vertical? I actually do have a vertical for my business stuff for next year. So yes and no. Um, my regular planner will still be an hourly, but um, my business will be a vertical. Next question, other than your monthly budget, how do you keep track of your expenses? Do you use a monthly spreadsheet of what is spent where? No, I don't. Um, my monthly spreadsheet is essentially my monthly view on the EC monthly deluxe planner that I use. So no spreadsheet, just nice and decorative and weird. <laughs> That's me. This is a great question. Um, opinions on staying with your parents to save it for a house versus saving while living on your own and to get a house. She said, since you kind of did both. Well, yeah, I have. I think that there is something to be said for paying your own light bill and being responsible for all the groceries in your fridge and all of that. But if I could go back in time and save all of that money when I was a younger kid, I would have multiple paid for houses by now. I wish I would have known what I know now and even if I would have saved half of it, um, I would be in, I'd be in superb shape. But I didn't and that's okay. I feel like if you have a good relationship with your parents and you just keep your parents informed as to like what you're doing and why you're there and if they support your goals and dreams financially. I mean, they don't have to support you, but if they wanna give you maybe free rent or really discounted rent or uh, groceries or whatever it is while you're there, I say go for it. Um, there obviously are situations where it's not good to be with your parents because of reasons and you know you have to make that call. But my parents and I really get along and there's no like animosity or issues or, me feeling like they owe me for something or vice versa like it's just it's not like that and I have a good relationship with my mom and my dad so yeah I mean we just like we're all adults and we have mutual understandings with each other about things but I guess it's about your family dynamic and what works best for you you know if your parents are going to be upset that you're not contributing to the grocery fund when you've got you know thirty thousand dollars sitting in the bank waiting for a mortgage down payment you know they depending on their personalities and stuff you just don't want people getting like mad about it when you've got you know goals happening and then and then at that point i think it would be worth moving out on your own renting as cheap as you can maybe getting a couple of roommates 
and just to remember that it is temporary. If I could go back, I would stay with my parents as long as I could and save up as many dollars and cents as I could, but you know, I got to do it for a little while again, so that was kind of fun. Hey, can you sit down and be nice? Can you sit down? Everybody can see your ears. Everybody can see your ears. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> Hi, Doyle. Um, someone also asked if you can only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Again, Dragon House, but it's closed, so no. And then what is your favorite holiday and why? I would say the 4th of July. <laughs> I really, really like it because I used to, I haven't been in many years and I need to go back, but I used to go to the uh, 4th of July race in Daytona every year for NASCAR. And I haven't been back in years, but it was just such a fun time. I think I went for like, what, five or six years straight or something. Um, it was awesome. It was so much fun. And I'm a huge NASCAR fan. Yeah, I don't know. But I love 4th of July. It's always like a good, not kickoff to summer, but like, you know, summertime barbecue fun. I don't know. But I do not like fireworks, by the way. Uh, fireworks are freaky. I don't like them. And because I have this poocher doocher, we can't really be outside like 4th of July weekend too much during the evening. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get up like super, super early in the morning, like three o'clock in the morning and kind of like trick him that, that it's like five or 5.30. Then we'll go out right before sunset because most people aren't, you know, cracking fireworks and stuff at that point let him go outside for the last time and then we just kind of buckle in for the night and i've got a sound machine that's always in my room and um, if it gets too crazy like in the house or wherever we are um, i'll just go into the bedroom with him and like watch a movie on my phone or whatever um because the sound machine kind of draws like draws that sound out so doyle's just doyle but that is it for all of the questions. If you guys made it this far, like, you should just thumbs up for yourself because holy bajolies, and I hope you grabbed a snack because this was a doozy. It was a doozy, wasn't it, doilies? Yeah. It was such a doozy that my laundry is not done, but um, it's stopped, so I need to switch that out a little bit. You gonna say goodbye with me? You gonna say goodbye? You coming over here? Come here, come here. You guys wanna see what the dog is doing? He's protesting. I asked him to come over here and this is what he does. What are you doing, Doyle? What are you doing? That is the opposite of come here. Yeah, that is the opposite of come here. <laughs> oh, thank you, you're so helpful. You're so helpful. All right, so Doyle and I are gonna say goodbye. Thank you guys for watching this long ass video. Um, if you've got questions, feel free to post them below. Uh, also, your thoughts and feelings about some of the questions that I posed today. Um, that would be awesome. Just put it down below because I'm like super curious. So anyways, we're going to go. I need to do the rest of my laundry. And Doyle needs to get out of my arms because he hates this. But there is a window in front of me, so he is having a good time looking outside and seeing people walking around. There's some people walking outside right now. So all right, well, we're going to jet. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you later. Say bye. You gonna say goodbye? Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Honk, honk. All right, see you later, guys. Bye.